Uh, good morning, folks. We can look at some of these here in a bit, but I have a question. Or um, more of a statement, I guess. <clears throat> Hope I don't step on anybody's toes. I don't mean to upset anybody today. Uh, I'm right here. Southwest Missouri. Right in the corner. Four states. Now these are just laying out here as an example. But on YouTube, I can find um, all of the archaeology digs. And they have a lot of names. You all know probably know all the famous names where there's famous digging going on but uh, and I'm I'm taking them for their word of course that as they dig down they are um, can date those that strata and uh, I have heard that they've got to 50,000 years but, um, well, um, I don't really know how to say this, folks, because it really is just a question. But in all these YouTube documentaries that I have watched diligently more than once, it seems that this is what is being shown, a point. And uh, from their this they're making assumptions on the um, what would be the word the technical advance or the intelligence or whatever of these people based on this well I got kind of a problem with that let me uh, well First of all, there's only two types of stone tools, and they have two uses, only two, of any stone tool. Uh, one of them is abrasion, which is stone on stone, or stone on something else, and the other one is cutting, and it is always stone on something else. And uh, these examples of tools that I'm seeing at these archaeology digs and all, it seems like they're just showing cutting tools. And more specifically, these are hunting tools. There's a lot of cutting tools that has nothing to do with hunting. There, There's plants and they carve wood. But... Um, the thing that I'm missing here, and what I'm looking for so much in these documentaries, are abrasion tools. I believe there was many more abrasion tools than there were cutting tools. Uh, this is just an example, and I do occasionally, I, I, some of these folks do show some crescent cutting, uh, uh, crescent cutters. I just and uh, they're for cutting, scraping, whatever. And these are all, every one of them, are all a cutting crescent. Big and small. I mean, there was some really heavy duty work going on with these great big crescents, crescent shaped tools. Each one of these. And this is just a small example of the small ones. I've got hundreds of them. Little tiny crescent tools that you'd think that uh, they were using to make a fiddle or something. You know, it's some really fine artwork and wood or something going on. And there's big ones that had to be used. These are cutting tools. But each one of these crescent shape cutting tool has more or less a match in a crescent shaped abrasion tool all of these are abrasion tools 
they're not for cutting but they're for whatever the abrasion need was and um, they are they're all for abrasion uh, well these are actually a uh, crescent shape abrasion uh, there's a lot of abrasion that went on there's different shapes of uh, tool was needed or whatever that was this one's almost more of a polishing abrasion but the reason that I feel that abrasion tools have been kind of left behind now let me say one more thing over here I do feel that and I really appreciate archaeologists but they've take all the little tools and they take them out with a toothbrush or whatever toothpick but they but they uh, they know where they came from and and where they were and we well, you know all that but as I said this is what I get to see where do these go where are these abrasion tools these abrasion tools are important to me because the abrasion tool is normally made from the cortex and the cortex is the one that is 99% of the tools I have are the ones that has images and carved into them because it's easier to do that these are just I won't stop and do it but there's elephants and, and birds and all kinds of stuff on these abrasion tools and that is where the artwork is so where are they at are, are they boxed in a warehouse or something i'm talking to you young folks i'm old i can't go to all these museums and knock on their doors and ask and go down there and look at that stuff so if you are interested in rock art then find the the boxes where they're tucked away and then go from there but the important thing is if important to me anyway if uh, I pull out a box of tools that I mean abrasion tools that has carvings on them and everything that are 50,000 years old and I find a thunderbird and snake which is one of my pet researches then I would know that the thunderbird legend was at least 50,000 years old and um, another thing that I would like to know is about these extinct animals. Um, are these tools that I'm finding that has these images, are they more than 10,000 years old? Or did folks just keep on carrying on, carving elephants and birds and, and horses and on and on and on? Joanna told me she can go down to the flea market and pick up some elephant effigies any day. And we don't have any elephants in southwest Missouri. So, did they stop carving this kind of stuff then? If y'all have any... Um, comment on this I'd, I'd love to hear it in fact I think I made this video too long already we'll get back to that it'll be fun bye for now folks